So from where I see it, I think there are a couple of things in particular that have been accelerated by COVID that will remain permanent. And I think one of them is how we communicate with clients. Um, and, and that is in a couple of different ways. So one is there will be more an improved online communication in general. And I think this is something that was really highlighted as the markets were selling off and became very volatile um, during spring of 2020. And it was clear that being able to communicate with people remotely was a very important part of their overall confidence in their, in their, um, their wealth setup. And I think that that will extend to there being less of a requirement for physical meetings. I certainly don't think physical meetings are going away, uh, and nor do I think human interaction is going away. But I feel as though there is a level of um, communication that will be overtaken by uh, online comms um, that will sit alongside you know, the more traditional physical getting together. And then the other thing which I think has been very clearly needed during the course of the pandemic and 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 will continue to be the case. And that is that um, clients have needed to have improved transparency around the value of their portfolios, how they're behaving, uh, understanding why they're behaving a certain way and have a need for improved control. So by that, I mean, you know, as markets have been evolving around them, there may be people who are in drawdown on their pension, for example, and want to have the ability to be able to change those drawdowns uh, related to their own requirements and perhaps related to their own views on the market. Um, or they may want to change the risk levels that they've set themselves. Again, perhaps down to individual views that they have uh, on the market or, or their own needs have changed. So I think um, the digital changes in this respect are sort of fundamental perhaps to how we're going to think about wealth management going forward. So it's been a really interesting period for NetWealth. We um, launched just under five years ago and we have always had a hybrid approach. So we had always combined the need for humans and a human service alongside great modern technology. And so really for us in lots of ways, this has been a real validation of our approach. Um, and it's really, affirmed the need for that combination of great technology as being a key enabler for the way wealth management services need to be delivered. Well, I think there are a lot of challenges in terms of digital for wealth management. Um, when we talk about the industry across the board. And that is partly down to the fact that technology is still, you know, reasonably lacking, I would say, uh, in terms of a, you know, more traditional, generic business that has been around for a long time and is managing large amounts of assets and has potentially been, um, you know, merging or acquiring with other businesses over time and as a result is a is a sort of cobbled set of technologies that have been brought together and aren't necessarily deployed in the most efficient form so one big challenge for these big companies is to find a way to um, move away from those inbuilt inefficiencies and really get to grips with how technology can dramatically improve their overall service um, I think that digital is going to be used much more comprehensively in the client service model. And that is whether it's how clients are communicated with, um, how we interact with prospective clients who are considering switching or perhaps even using wealth management for the first time. And also how to extend the thinking well beyond the basic services that are currently provided. Um, I think there's just tremendous upside in using technology to dramatically enhance the overall services that are currently available to clients using wealth management services. Mm -hmm.